Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today we are talking about step two in writing and illustrating a children's book, and that is going to be developing your storyboard. So creating a storyboard for your book. And it's, it's really important because at this step, it's nice to, it's where you can kind of see flaws in your story and where you can help it flow a little bit better. And it's um, really important because it shows you the beginning, the middle, and the end of your story and how it works all together. It's like an overview of your whole book with these little, I just think of them as thumbnail drawings of each page. And so really quick before we do that, um, I just wanna recap your homework assignment from last week and that was character development. So you should have done 10 different drawings of your main character in diff with different expressions, doing different things, different um, positions and um, orientations <laughs> and also to draw five either backgrounds or objects that you're going to use in your book. So here's some that I did. I kind of looked at my main character. I know what he looks like. I have lots of pictures of him and I like the loose watercolor look and I also really like the, the bold pen lines and how it kind of brings my illustration together, but I'm still not sure about my background. Um, Hopefully, by the end of doing those 10 drawings, you were a little bit more comfortable drawing that main character doing different things. That's really the main goal, I guess, is to just like figure out how to make that main character stay the main character, like recognizable throughout the book, even though they're probably gonna be doing different things. Now let's talk about the storyboard. So think of the storyboard as thumbnails for each page, and it's like an overview of the whole book. So it's really, really helpful to see that because you can see if the flow works, where are the focal points on each page, where's the best place to put text, um, scales of different objects in your, in your illustrations. And um, for me, it's just like the best time to edit because you haven't put a ton of time into it yet. Um, you might also think at this stage what text will be on which page and does that flow work? You can always edit it. This is really just like the rough, rough draft. Um, and at this stage, you need to know what size your book is. So um, step number one is to figure out, is your book going to be square? Is it going to be little uh, vertical book? Is it going to be more of a horizontal book like this or like this? Are you just gonna print a little paperback book? This is actually, I did illustrate one book. So anyway, I forgot about that one. Is it just gonna be like little and square? Is it going to be tall like this one? So think about the size of your pages. And you might not know like the exact measurements, but at least have an idea if you're dealing with a vertical, horizontal, or if you're dealing with a square. That's important because the thumbnail sketches are really just ideas and the, you can make that bigger or smaller when you work on your illustrations. Um, so at, that at this point, you may need to figure out who you're going to be printing with. And I found a place in China, but the price didn't include shipping. So I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna talk about them yet because I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna use them. But you can always use blurb, but I, I don't know, I just really wanna find a book, a place where I can print like maybe some like some gold foil on it. And I really want the pages inside to have a little substance, a little weight. You know, I don't want to be able to see the other illustration on the backside through the paper. That's really important to me. Even though I'm not, uh, like my goal is not to become an illustrator. I just really wanna illustrate a children's book, but I really, I really want it to look nice um, and have, you know, like, I love the matte cover on this book. It's just been really hard for me to find a place that will do a book like this and print it for me unless I want to print like 500. And maybe I will. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so think about the size. That's step number one. Step number two is to lay it out on a large piece of paper or on a small piece of paper. If you're going to use just, whoops, if you're going to use printer paper, you could always use this to create your storyboard, but the idea of a storyboard really is to be able to see it all together. So you'll need a way to just kind of tape your pap papers together or lay them out on the floor so you can see the whole story and get a feel of, 
of how it's flowing and your main, uh, your focus on each page. And if you need to include, um, if you need to kind of like break it up because it's a little boring or, or whatever. Um, so think about that. I'm just going to be using, I'm probably just going to use a piece of printer paper, honestly. And I'm just going to, maybe I'll use four pieces, I don't know. If you look at how most artists do it, or illustrators, they have it on one single page, but I don't think there's a right or a wrong way to do it, as long as you can see it all together. So I will put on my uh, Pinterest board, I'll include a link in the description below, different uh, illustration boards or storyboards, not illustration boards, storyboards from illustrators. So I'll include a link and you can kind of see what they do and how they handle it. But I had drawn one. I mean, this is tiny. I would definitely do it bigger than this. But you can kind of see, you know, you have like one page, one page, one page, one page. And really your book, your story doesn't start until like one, two, three, four, five, page six of the book. You know, if you're including the cover and these end papers, um, I guess that's what they're called. <laughs> so we'll talk about those more today. So you're gonna draw it out and then on each page kind of make rough sketches and of what illustrations you want and maybe where the text is and start refining your text. You could like actually put it in or below, just an idea of what is happening on that page and maybe you don't even have text. You can just skip that stage. You might wanna use a ruler and make it look refined to just get those drawings in there, but you don't have to. You can just freehand like this and draw some squares. It's not gonna make it a better or a worse book. It just depends on how you like to work. So today I thought it would be helpful to look at some children's books and kind of see where their focus point is, how it flows and where they're including full page spreads and maybe like breaking it up on other pages and how they're handling um, text. So we're gonna just look at some children's books. I'm gonna change my camera so you can see it. Okay, this first book that I wanna look at really quick is The Tale of Peter Rabbit but she basically does illustration and text and she'll kind of switch. So illustration and tech, text, illustration, illustration and text, text, illustration. And you can kind of see she's keeping illustrations on. They probably did this maybe for printing purposes. I'm not sure. Her main character is typically in the middle of the page and it's really outlined. It has bolder outlines than the background. It's kind of a little bit muted. Um, and there's lots of interesting things going on. So it's not just the main characters, but there's birds and lots of things kind of making it interesting. And then when we get to our main character, she just has our main character and she's just included this very light background around him. So not every page has these really detailed drawings for the background. Okay, so that's Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Okay, so let's look at a bigger book. This is Madeline. And there are, I really like how he uses just blocks of color as his background in some pages. And then, then the text is typically down at the bottom. So he's using just a lot of these big blocked colors, really fun, simple illustrations. And then he'll include some color. And on other pages, there will be even more color. So he's uh, adding interest by adding color, I feel like it's a really nice flow and then you have, again, the, the illustration and the text below it. So this is a really, I like this way and I really like these books, that's probably why. Um, but then he's breaking up the illustrations on other pages by putting them apart um, and using colors and then we go back to the yellow. So I do like these Madeline books, but an idea to learn from him is just how he's kind of created the area of the illustration with this block of color and then simple words underneath, which makes it um, just easy to read and fun. Okay, then you have books like uh, Maurice Sendak's, um, this is the Little Bear book. This is the one about his dad and his illustrations, they're more refined, you know, they have like a, a frame on each page. There's interesting things going on. He uses a lot of hatching and there's more text in this one. This is for, for children that are maybe a little bit older for a little bit of a longer story, but really fun and engaging illustrations and muted colors, which make it just kind of feel this peaceful feel and the hatching he uses to create texture is really nice and consistent throughout the book. He's added color behind this one along with the frame. So anyway, it's just kind of good to see. I don't think he has any full page spreads, except maybe this one, you know, kind of ties 
together a little bit. But you can see like his focal point is kind of bouncing back and forth here because they're looking at each other, which is really fun how he did that on two different pages. Okay, this is another family favorite. This is Stickman by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler is the illustrator. And this is just a really fun book. And even inside on these, I guess they're called the end papers. They're decorated with the illustrations from the book, which is fun. And these kind of alternate to where the text is. Sometimes it's underneath, sometimes it's on it. They have a full page illustration and then they're breaking it up here. Same thing with the next page. And she'll keep doing that until we get to, you know, these pages. And now we have a full page illustration and the text is in the sky, but then it's also below full page versus, you know, breaking it up and then having a full page here. I really like her books. They're just fun and it just shows you, you can break it up and have full page spreads. You don't need to do the same thing throughout the book. I really like this book, Owl Babies. And one thing that's fun about this book is each, uh, it's all full page spreads. So I just kind of want you to see what that looks like. Also, I'm sorry, yeah. We really like this book. We need to repair it. So Owl Babies, and they make really good use of this dark space, and there's tons of hatching. Um, but each page, see, is a full, we've got a full spread illustration here. And then the words are in the dark. Same thing with this page, and it continues throughout the book to be that way. But there's just really fun, whimsical illustrations, and you kind of see the little owls there. It just really draws you in and makes it, especially this page makes you kind of feel how small maybe they feel on that tree without their mom. But it's nice that he has all of these dark areas to put the text. I mean, that's something you might want to think about. Also, I haven't talked much about the focal point. I mean, a little bit on Little Bear, but um, also the like, not the psychology, but just where the gaze is and how, you're, how your characters are interacting and the flow of that feel and just like, the togetherness of the family. They did a really good job um, with the focus here on the mom. Oliver Jeffers, his books are so fun. We really like to read these as well. And he'll do full page spreads and then he'll have like um, these solid areas of color where he will have the text, but then he breaks it up. And I really think this just makes it so fun to read um, where you have the single character and then you have like just really fun ways of doing it. You might want to do some thumbnails of like different ways to set up your pages. That might be fun. But then as we get into the adventure, all of a sudden we're going to get some full page spreads and more full page spreads as we get further into the story. And then we start to break it up a little bit in the end. So, I think that it's good to look at these and kind of see like a, what do you think your book should feel like and how are these illustrators using these full page spreads versus, you know, single illustrations and I like um, Oliver Jeffers books have just enough words, you know, and the illustrations just kind of really draw you in. I mean, look at that. <laughs> this is Clifford's Halloween. So this is an older book but I really like the use of color in this one. That's why I also thought it would be good. Um, very limited color palette, but it makes it kind of engaging because we see the main character is this bright red dog that's huge, and the colors just add so much excitement to this book. If it was just black and white, it wouldn't be nearly as fun as if it had these big red, this big red dog. So maybe you don't want to have a ton of color in your book. Maybe you just want to use a very limited palette, have it more monochromatic. They have tons of empty space for the text, which is nice. We really like this next book and it is taped together in many parts. Like, look at that. We have just read this book hundreds of times probably. Um, but one thing that I like about this book that I wanted to point out as you're creating your storyboards is the flow. Okay, so we have this boy right here and he's continuous throughout the book trying to get the King Bidgood out of the bathtub. And it's really predictable because each, he has basically three things that happen. You have like him saying, help, we need to get the king out of the tub. Somebody volunteers and then you get to see them in the tub with, Mr. <laughs> with King Bidgood. And it's based on kind of what the king has said. 
Then he's like, help again, who's gonna volunteer the queen? And then the king says, come in with a yum, yum, yum. We're gonna have lunch in the tub. So it's, I think kids like this and I like it, it uh, builds anticipation, like what's gonna happen next? Who's gonna come in next? Like, look, he's still not out, who can help us? He will, said the duke. And then he's saying, it's time to fish, get out of the tub. And so you know that that's going to have something to do with this page. And there they are, fishing. And unfortunately, this page is completely gone. <laughs> Let's see, you have so many books. Let's talk about this one. These illustrations are way different than most of the ones that we've looked at. So Mo Willems, his books, super fun to read and um, always a favorite. Um, but I like, we like to look at the end papers and find, you know, sometimes there's a pigeon or sometimes something's eaten. That's kind of a fun thing. His illustrations are really simple. His colors are these nice pastels. And he is using like the comic book bubbles for the words for the book. So no one's telling us what's going on. All we get is like dialogue and sounds, which is a really fun way to read a story with kids. He has a great way of um, just creating interest in kids and the dialogue's really funny. So think about scale. He's like getting closer as he's getting madder and we can see the red in his eyes. That's really fun and he's changing up the text. It's like scribbly and feels like he's yelling at us. And then he does this where he breaks it up and it's just quick and the pigeon's kind of like throwing a tantrum and <laughs> we can hear his words and see what he's doing. And, my kids just absolutely love that. Also, full page spread here and full page spread at the end. And then they're together and it resolves. Let's look at one last book and this is a favorite for many people. But one thing that this illustrator did to kind of break up the brightness of this book is they included pages of black and white illustrations. And I've seen that in many of the books that I've read and it just kind of gives your eyes a break. You know, so you have these bright, bright colors, and then you have black and white again. Full page spread, full color, and then you get black and white. So it's like kind of this, this flow of intensity and then quiet. And also something that I wanna point out in these books is on each page, she's included something to kind of find. So there's a little mouse, and it's my, my daughter and my sons love finding the mouse and it's just in the color pages, so there he is. So anyway, you could include something little like that to add interest if you want. I mean, it's, this book has very few words, but it's a really, really nice story. I hope that was helpful for you to look at these books and figure out how these artists have done these things and apply it to your book. So where does it work best to have the text? And um, where does it work best to have the focal point? If you're working with a square book, it's gonna be different than if you're working with like a longer book or a taller book. So kind of think about those things and create your thumbnail drawings. Next week, we're going to be working on refining your style and choosing the colors that will best suit your book and also what medium you're going to be using um, so you can get started on your illustrations. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope this is helpful for those of you that want to illustrate and write a children's book. Have a great day. Thank you.